Good morning, everybody. My name is Gerkules, and welcome to a brand new Minecraft video. Hopefully you guys are having a good day. So this video is going to be a little bit different. And the reason I say that is because a brand new update is coming to Minecraft. Minecraft Update 1.20, the Trails and Tales update, has been undergoing through snapshots through quite some time now, and Mojang have given us features we never even have like ever dreamed would ever come to this update because during minecraft live mojang didn't really announce much for the update because they were only really announcing stuff that were guaranteed to be added to 1.20 and so mojang really surprised us with like a bunch of new features that we never saw coming and so the, i'm gonna split this into probably like two parts because there's quite a lot of stuff to introduce so without further ado let's get started so the first thing that we're gonna talk about guys that has been recently added to the game is armor trims and armor trims are basically ways that you can customize your armor and there's 16 different designs and you may be wondering where do you find these templates and what do they look like well in this chest in here is every single smithing template including the one that upgrades netherite we'll get into that in a little bit because this is different from the others and these 10 materials are all of the valuables that you can apply a armor trim on bear in mind if you do add like an iron trim to iron armor it's not going to be exactly visible so i would not recommend doing that it would only like change the texture of the iron armor slightly and it's not going to look very good and each of them have specific names so i'm going to go through the names of each of the templates one by one so a sentry template can be found in pillager outposts vex templates woodland mansions coast templates shipwrecks wild templates jungle temples finally making them useful dune template desert temple wayfinder shaper razor and host templates found in a brand new structure called the trailed ruins which we're going to discover in just a little bit ward and silence armor templates can be found in ancient cities tide template is gotten as a loot drop from elder guardians spire template and cities rib template nether fortresses i template strongholds and snout and the netherite upgrade template found in bastion remnants and every single bit of armor except for horse armor can be added to templates even turtle shell helmets believe it or not and since you can add like each mid each of these materials there's like over almost like a billion possible combinations that you can come up with like the possibilities with armor trims are endless so as a bit of a guide for those of you who are curious the the way you do this is you apply like whatever template you want to looks cool with the upgraded gui of the smithing table then you add the helmet and then you add whatever like material you want to use probably not another right ingot but this is just as an example but you also may be wondering well gercules how do i get these renewably you can't really get these renewably but you can duplicate them so what you do is you take the armor trim seven diamonds and then whatever material the template is kind of like made out of so for like the spire template it's purper but every time you do get a template a new crafting recipe shows up which shows you how to duplicate it so for the ones found in the trail ruins it uses terracotta like the crafting book is really helpful if you don't really know how to make these and honestly my opinion about these i think this is a really cool feature i think my favorite ones design wise on the armor is dune and silence silence covers the most on the armor because it looks like iron trim on lapis armor and not vice versa the tide one looks really cool like it has like the like the crack in the prismarine brick it matches the chest plate and a 
bit like on the helmet. I'm not entirely sure about the like percentages of like how rare it is to find them. So the, these things can actually be found in any chest in a Bastion Remnants, but when it comes to the bottom chests in the treasure bastions, it is a guaranteed find to get these. So I think guys, now it's time to actually locate a trail ruins. All right, guys, so I just teleported to one, and these structures aren't very easy to find. So what these structures are made out of is mostly mud brick, terracotta, and bits of gravel. These things don't have loot chests of any kind, but they do have this weird-looking block called suspicious gravel. And what you do is you take your brush. So this is how you craft it. Stick, copper ingot, feather very very simple and so then you take your brush and then if you see suspicious gravel or sand you hold right click and apparently you get an advancement for it and you have a chance of finding like random items in this case we found a spruce hanging sign we'll go into hanging signs i think in the next video because there's quite a few things i want to cover in this video and yeah look at that we have another block of suspicious gravel and this time we got a blue dye and these places aren't the only structure that can contain suspicious gravel but if you get suspicious gravel and suspicious sand for, from your creative inventory and try to brush it like no, nothing will come out of it so it has to be like naturally found now the other structures that uh contain suspicious sand slash gravel is underwater ruins desert temples and desert wells and so we will be having a look at those in just a minute because those have like their own like loot table in terms of like what you can find in the suspicious gravel or sand so real quick i'm gonna go into spectator mode now you can't really see much if you dig away like out all the stone like this is what these structures look like and like i think these kinds of rooms where it's like pure suspicious gravel is where you find like the good stuff so i'm gonna dig away at these and hopefully we can find like a pottery shard or a template oh yeah see there we go we found a template we found a uh, shaper now you have to be careful because these blocks are affected by gravity but when they fall they actually like break so you have to be very careful with these. So if you just go about digging with an efficiency five, like instaminable shovel, you could end up breaking a uh, suspicious gravel or sand by mistake. Aha, look at this. We found our first pottery shard. We found a friend and we found one out of 20 of these. Yes, that's right. There's 20 pot different pottery shards. They used to be called shards, but shard is like an archaeological term. So now that we're on the subject of pottery uh, shards, I'm gonna uh, kill myself really quick so that way I can go back to spawn easier. So there's 20 different varieties, and it depends on what structure that you uh, find these at. The only one I know is the uh, brewer pottery shirt is found in the desert well, but most of these are found in like the underwater ruins and the trail ruins. So I was about to say, so the types there are is the angler, which has a fishing rod, archer, which features a bow, arms up, which has like a little stick figure with his arms up, blade, which features a sword brewer which features a potion burn which depicts a flame danger which features a creeper explore which features a treasure map it, friend took me a while to figure out what this one was it kind of looks like a chest but it actually depicts a villager with like the big nose and now like you can't unsee that heart features a heart obviously heartbreak features a broken heart Howl features a wolf minor features a pickaxe Mourner features a obscure warden, it looks like. Plenty features a treasure chest. Prize features like a realistic looking diamond. Sheaf features like a sheaf of wheat. Tree for shelter. Skull for skull. And snort, which I think looks like a turtle, but could also be a sniffer. Which, speaking of sniffers, let's, uh, the, uh, sniffer mob. 
So let's start about how you find sniffers. Sniffers you won't find in the wild. You have to find this item called a sniffer egg, which you have to find in a very specific location, AKA brushing suspicious sand in warm underwater ruins. So now real quick, I wanna give myself night vision and see if we can find any ocean ruins. Aha, okay, we found some underwater ruins. And yeah, as you can see right here, you can find suspicious sand. We are finding uh, pottery shards, which is, I guess, nice to see. But there's one type of item that I'm trying to find in this. Apparently, you can also find an iron axe here. So I wonder if archaeology is like speed run worthy. And also just a tip of finding like extra suspicious sand, dig underneath like the sandstone box because there is a chance that you could potentially find just a random block of suspicious sand lurking about. There is another ocean ruin by it. Like, like if I find it, I find it. But if not, then whatever. I will say, Padre shards seem really common here. Also, is it just me or dr do Drown have a new swimming animation? Like, I swear I didn't see this, like, before the snapshots. Could be a 1.20 feature, but I don't really know. <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen, we got it. All right, so now let's talk about the sniffer a little bit. The sniffer egg is an egg you just place down to like wait it hatch, just like a turtle egg. Now on any normal block, the sniffer takes about 20 minutes to hatch, but if you wanna hatch it faster, use moss, it'll only take 10 minutes. So yeah, this is what the sniffer looks like, an ancient turtle dinosaur with six legs. And this was indeed the mob that won the mob vote of 2022. And I kid you not, this mob won over half of the total votes. So, so long to the tough golem and the rascal, because those mobs were very, very useless. And the reason this mob won was because of its ability to sniff out certain seeds that can only be obtained from these guys. And the way you breed these guys is with a certain item called a torch flower seed. And the way you obtain these is by the sniffer just digging around. Where's the baby? Oh wait, I forgot. They actually give you the egg and not the actual baby. So there's certain blocks that the sniffer has to dig around in order for it to find seeds. I don't know if sand counts. I know moss counts, like other blocks includes like dirt, grass, mycelium, mud, and a few others. So currently, right as of right now, the sniffer can only find two types of seeds, the torch flower seeds, and I believe was called the, yeah, pitcher pod. And so the process of like obtaining these flowers is by getting farmland. And yeah, look at that, we got a brand new advancement, planting the past, which is plant any sniffer seed. And I really like the way these two flowers look. And the torch flower, unlike what it says, doesn't actually provide light. So if I put F3 and then like block light says zero. So the torch flower doesn't produce light as it says, which is kind of like an oxymoron. But like, what can you do? Like maybe they'll change it in a future snapshot, but like, I doubt it. And the torch flower can indeed be put in a flower pot, just like that. And one thing I did forget to mention, very important about the decorative pots. Like the rim on top of the pot doesn't count for its hitbox. So you can like decorate it in like very cool ways. So like what you can do is you can like put chains on top to make it like look like a hanging pot. Or you can put a flower pot on top of a pot and it has like the same brick texture. I feel like that's pretty much it. But there is one thing that yeah, there it is. I was hoping we would come across one of these guys. Now, is this the baby or is this like an adult? I can't really tell. But yeah, they have indeed added camels. And the way you find these guys is from desert villages. Okay, yeah, it is an adult. It just looked really small. So camels are actually really cool in that you can put a saddle on them and you actually don't need to like tame these guys like a horse. But the difference between camels and horses is that two players can ride it. 
simultaneously. Hostile mobs actually can't reach you. So if we spawn a Vindicator like that, switch our game mode to survival, Vindicator can't hit us. So this could be like an easy way to lure hostile mobs since you can't put hostile mobs on a lead. It won't work for ones that deal range damage like skeletons or pillagers. And it looks like camels have like a lot of health. But one cool ability the camel does have is its ability to dash. Pretty fair distance, like I would say like 12 blocks maybe. And the item you use to uh, breed a camel is actually a cactus. And the baby camels are probably one of the cutest baby animals ever. And camels are indeed required for the 2x2 uh, two two, along with the sniffer. So now guys, let's go over the advancements. We found one for finding a pottery shirt through a suspicious spot. There's one for make a decorated pot out of four pottery shards. There we go. We get the advancement careful restoration. And if you ever want to get like the pots back. Oh, wait, what? Okay, I actually didn't know this. I thought you had to use like silk touch to get these, but I guess not. Previously, like the way that you got the pottery shards back is if you like break the pot with your fist, but I guess they changed that. Interesting. And there's other advancements we completed, like craft a trimmed armor as smithing table, which is only consuming one template. And then after that is smithing with style. Apply these smithing templates at least once. Spire, snout, rib, ward, silence, vex, tide, and wayfinder. And you have to do those ones specifically. And then there's three advancements for the sniffer. So there's one for obtaining a sniffer egg. There's one in between that, which I'm not entirely sure what it is, but I'm pretty sure I can find it in like the wiki. You plant any sniffer seeds. So I'm guessing the one in between is like obtain a seed from a sniffer. So my opinion so far on like 1.20 with like the pottery shards at the decorative pots, the decorative pots I rate like a 10 out of 10 like so far i think everything in this update i would rate a 10 out of 10. the only criticism i have is a way for you to obtain the pottery shards like renewably like maybe the stone mason villagers will be able to sell one for like a really rare price and like maybe a really rare way to get armor trims is from uh toolsmith villagers like these i understand of like duplicating the the uh upgrade upgrading smithing trims and the camels i also think are cool and of course the sniffer mob oh there is one thing that i forgot to mention actually hold up there is a brand new music disc that i have to dig in trail ruins to find it so if we look up disc as you can see there's this brown colored disc with a light blue ring on it which is called relic by a new music artist which started making music for minecraft called aaron sheriff and uh aaron sheriff also has a playlist on spotify for like five new music tracks for the game itself and there's certain biomes which play it in but as always i keep my music off because of like editing it and also one new feature that i'm gonna start using now is directional audio so i'm gonna demonstrate what it's like off so directional audio is basically wherever you're facing like makes the noise louder so if i put in like strad for example like it gets quieter when i'm facing behind it but when i face towards it it makes it louder so yeah no matter where i face it's always like the same amount of volume it was kind of annoying in the past when you turn a certain direction and it just gets quieter that audio change is like very cool so now we're gonna listen to relic and see what i think about it
pretty dope track so far. I dig it. Oh, sh hush with your noises. I think this music disc, if I remember from Zumavoy's video, is like almost three and a half minutes long. So we should be approaching the end. Yep, the music is dying down. Alright, and that is Relic. And this is only part one, guys. Part two, we're going to talk about the bamboo blocks. Brand new general blocks that, like, will sprite this game up a bit. There are a couple of uh, in-game settings that have been added. There's this new thing called glint speed and glint strength, which is like the enchantment glint on uh, armor. Potions don't count because the enchantment glint on potions is removed. Thank goodness, finally. So yeah, glint speed controls how fast the visual glint shimmers across enchanted items. Glint strength controls how transparent the visual glint is on enchantment to the items this is going to be a long video sorry for that but i think it's worth it me covering at least half of the 1.20 features part two will be coming soon and also as a bit of an announcement thank you guys so much for getting me to 400 subscribers also real quick in the screenshot let me just add a little k at the front of that mm, yes so thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have enjoyed, please do be sure to drop a like rating. Consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future videos. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Sniffers and me are signing out. See you guys later.